Let me thank everyone, each and every one of you, for coming out today to be a part of this joyous occasion for Pine Bluff Fire and Emergency Services in the city of Pine Bluff. Uh, we, can't ex we can't express enough our gratitude for you coming out. We've received three brand new 2012 E1 pumpers for the department. Yes, it is. Yeah. And we're excited, it's because of you that we have these. Uh, you provide us with the tools and resources that we need to be there in your time of need, so we really appreciate that. So if I can just ask real quickly as a courtesy, we just silence our cell phones, and uh, we'll be brief. Okay, we'll be brief. We won't take up too much of your time. Everyone has uh, busy schedules. So without further ado, I'm gonna bring to the podium the head of our department, Fire Chief Sean Howe. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out and welcome you to our fire station. When I say our, that means all of you. This is your fire station. We just take care of it for you, but this is a, the citizen of the Pine Bluff Fire Station. Uh, I want to thank all the elected officials in the house, um, clergy, um, significant others with the uh, business community that help us in a number of events that we participate in. I just want to say thank you for all you have done and all that you continue to do throughout the community. I'd like to thank our guests uh, here today. We have with us a representative of Sunbelt, Mr. Uh, Chip Crooms. He's worked very closely with us uh, through this whole process. Uh, we met Lieutenant Clark, and we have Honorable Mayor Carl A. Reed as students. So that's our panel guests. I'd like to thank all of them for participating uh, with us here today. Uh, I'd also like to echo the thank you that goes out to all of you that voted for the 58 sales tax. That's how these trucks were purchased. You know, uh, through that passing of that 58 uh, sales tax, those funds allowed us to purchase these trucks that are going to allow us to better serve you. And that's the ultimate goal, is to be able to serve you with uh, reliable equipment, faster equipment, safer equipment. This equipment has some of the state-of-the-art uh, safety features built into it. And that was one of the key driving points for us selecting this truck, was the safety features that it provides to our firefighters as they respond to the uh, emergencies that we get called out on. And uh, one of the new features that they have is the uh, roll cage system that's included inside. You can't see it, but similar to what a race car has. If that truck were to roll over, it has a roll cage system in it uh, to protect our firefighters. So that is very important that uh, firefighters protect it as they're on their way to uh, serve you. And um, we, we thank them for that uh, improvement in technology. Uh, along that process of uh, deciding on E1, we formulated an internal selection committee made up of our members. And that was something that was very crucial, that we had firefighters from all ranks included in the purchasing process, design features, to hear from the firefighters, this is what's important to us. Oftentimes, trucks are designed not necessarily thinking about the end user. You know, they, they put uh, gadgets in places and whatever, and they say, well, why did they put this right here? Why did they put that over here? It was better served us in this position. So we wanted to hear from the firefighters, and that's where uh, we call him Chip. Chip came in and listened to us, and took our ideas back to the plant and said, hey, this is where they want this located. This is going to better serve them. So at the end result, we got a product that was designed by our members. And I want to thank those members that served on that committee. It was a nine-member committee, including a, our full house uh, emergency vehicle technician. I don't see him. In, he's, out, he's here somewhere, but he's always in the background doing something. That's uh, Captain Brian McPherson. He was on that committee, as well as others. And it, it was a group effort. You know, I just didn't sit down and pick out a fire truck. You know, it was a group effort that everybody had some say-so. They brought ideas to the table, and I think we have a product that not only are the firefighters pleased with, but you'll be pleased with as well as you see them coming to service you. So um, with that, you know, I just want to say thank you again. And uh, these are your fire trucks. Uh, we invite you to come out and look at them. We're having an open house this Saturday from 11 to 3. So if you've got friends and family that were not able to come out today, they'll be on display again right here at this same station from 11 to 3 this Saturday. You know, so we have in our open house. Uh, just to, you know, all this is part of Fire Prevention Week. If you didn't know, this is Fire Prevention Week. It started Sunday and it ends on Saturday. So we've had a number of activities throughout the community highlighting Fire Prevention Week. But this is Fire Prevention Week, and we end Fire Prevention Week uh, with our open house. And this year's theme was have two ways out. Have two ways out of your home. We encourage you to uh, practice that with your friends and family, to have two ways out. Ensure that you have a working smoke alarm. Uh, if you need assistance with that, feel free to call us at our office at 730-2048, and we'll provide you assistance. We provide free smoke alarms, home surveys. We'll, we'll help you any way we can to make sure you have a fire safe home. So 
once again, thank you for coming out. Thank you for your support. And, and we encourage you to uh, look at the fire trucks and uh, see what your tax dollars are uh, spent. As we say, your tax dollars at work. And that's what we got today. So once again, thank you. And uh, we have uh, Mr. Wilkinson is joining us. We thank you for coming out today. Glad to have you. So uh, once again, thank you. And I'll bring to the podium our Honorable Carl A. Reedus, our mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I, 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 I don't want to forget him. He's worked with us tremendously uh, through this process. But uh, no, this is Chip Crooms, Sun Sunbelt Fire. He's our uh, local representative. and He's provided a wealth of uh, advice and customer service. And uh, we want to welcome him and give him a chance to say a few words as well. Thank you, Chief Howell. Thank you to the city of Pine Bluff, to Mayor Reedus, for entrusting us with the opportunity to serve you, the citizens of Pine Bluff. It is with uh, humble responsibility that we take this job. If you were to look back at our cell phone records over the past year and you know, 16 months, you'd probably be amazed at all the time we've talked and discussed about how we can invest your money in the best way to take care of your firefighters so that when you call 911, they have what they need to protect you. Uh, I work for Sunbelt Fire. We've been in business 30 years. We're the largest E1 dealer in all of North America. So we come with a wealth of knowledge, but as Chief uh, Howell uh, pointed out, these trucks were designed by your firefighters. It is not my responsibility to fight fire in the city of Pine Bluff. It is not your responsibility. It's their responsibility. And it's my job to make sure they have what they need so that in your time of need, they're able to respond and to take care of you to prolong your life and to make sure this city is protected. So my hat's off, my hats go off to the firefighters that respond at all hours of the day. They're why we do what we do. And uh, Chief Howell and the committee work tirelessly and you can rest assured that uh, no stone was unturned, that they thought through every possible detail uh, to make sure that they had at their, at their fingertips what they needed to do the job. And to Mayor Reedus and his support of Chief Howell and the department, thank you for giving us this opportunity to serve you guys and the city. And uh, now the fun gets to uh, really get going as we get to make sure these things are, are protecting you for the next 25 years. So again, from Sunbelt Fire and E1, we thank you. All right, if you can join me in welcoming up to the podium our illustrious mayor, Mayor Carl A. Reedus. <laughs> thank you, All right, good morning. I tell you, I'll take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for being out this morning. I know there are things on your plate and you could have selected to be somewhere else, but you're here to see what you, each one of you as an individual within the city of Pine Bluff has invested in. And that's your future and your children's future. Let me just kind of lay a little groundwork here. You know, I became mayor in January 2005. We did not have a single fire truck that was probably less than 25 years old. We hadn't reinvested in you as citizens. You know, today, help me with this, Chief, all our trucks are now basically about four years old on average. On average and we have two trucks. One is 2000 and the other one's 2002, Three. 2003. You know, so instead of keeping trucks, you know, 20 some years, our objective is to follow what the industry does. We want to replace our trucks somewhere between every 12 to 15 years because technology and equipment is changing on that basis. So we want to make sure that our citizens are protected and continue to be protected. Public safety, which includes both police and fire services, has always been a priority for this administration, the Reedus administration. Municipalities were chartered based around public safety. That's the reason why most cities were started, to make sure that they could protect and serve each and every one of you as citizens. 
Our fire department today operates around four divisions. We have an administrative group, we have an operational group, fire prevention division, and a training division. So each and every one of these individuals are working somewhere within one of those categories. Today, I'm happy to say that we have 104 employees within the fire services, of which 102 are certified firefighters, the highest number in this city's history. No if and buts about it. So that's absolutely wonderful. We are making sure that you are protected and serve properly. We have seven fire stations, and our oldest fire station is station number three, which is located about 31st and Ash, 30th and Ash. That station is 56 years old, but we're replacing that station. We're replacing it with a brand new state-of-the-art station, which will be built at 32nd and Beach, right there in front of First Presbyterian Church, to help service where this community is growing, that's South Pine Bluff, and where our commercial investment is going. So that station, which would be about a $2.5 million investment, is all because of each and every one of you. Once again, investing in what was called the Pine Bluff Visioning 2020 Initiative. And that initiative was funded by your support of what's been coined as that penny for progress, 38 cents for jobs, and job incentives, and five eight cents for quality of life, capital improvements. These are the capital improvements right here. So we're going to continue to serve the citizens of this community and make sure that you and your family, you and your property, are protected to the best of our ability. No doubt about that. Also, let me mention one other thing, because it's, we got a hard working group of fire service and firefighters here. We have acquired over $1 million in grants since 2010, which has helped us to provide the fire services and emergency management to our citizens. That's a tremendous amount of work, and we owe that to each and every one of these individuals, Chief Howell and his staff, who's worked to make that happen. Let me also mention a couple of things that I think that's extremely important here. And that's the things that have been done on the community outreach perspective. Our community outreach has a number of incentives or a number of programs, one being the free smoke alarm program, which any citizen with a household in the city of Pine Bluff can call their local station or call this main station to make sure that if you need fire alarms, fire and smoke alarms, that they will come out assess your property, and install them, right, Chief? Right. All righty. All, all of them are purchased donated funds. That's right. That's right. They are free to you. Free home surveys. A home survey to come and help you understand where that might be some challenges with fire escape routes, to identify fire escape routes, to help you understand how to protect and serve, how, how to protect your family. So please take that, take that under consideration. Invite your local fire station out to make sure that that's done. Also, get free blood screening, blood pressure screening at your local fire stations. You know, we live in the Delta. And unfortunately, the Delta brings about certain challenges itself. One is a health challenge. Let's take advantage of making sure that individuals that are trained in this area can help us and can make sure that we know where we stand from that health perspective, especially when it comes to free blood pressure screening. They can do that. You can either go to your station, local station, or you can come to this station. Also, we have free fire prevention and safety classes for our local schools, for all our senior citizens, for our local businesses, and any com uh, uh, community service group any church. Sometimes churches are looking for a variety of activities. Call on these individuals here to come out and be a part. They are your public servants. We are a part of this community. We will do all that we can do to make sure that we protect and serve each and every one of you. 
Uh, I see a couple of people that went through our Citizens Fire Academy that's here. This is the second class that was held for the Citizen Fire Academy. You need to understand what all they do to protect you and your family. And also what you can do to help leverage the work that they do by protecting your family and your friends. So if you have an opportunity, please get with them. Have your organizations come and talk with the fire services department to make sure that they can help you protect yourself. CPR training. That could be done by these individuals for any of your organizations. They do it for the schools, senior citizens. They do it for churches. So invite them out. Also, let me mention one other thing I forgot to mention earlier. I mentioned about the grants. But we received, we were one of, how many communities received the SAFER grant? Yes. Ernest, can you? It's not many. <laughs> no, yes, yeah, not many communities in this nation received a SAFER grant. A SAFER grant is a grant to allow you to hire firefighters. We received that grant 2010. Six individuals. That's what allowed us to get up to where we are at 102. But we've budgeted those individuals in so they can continue to be part of our fire and emergency service. So we aren't just utilizing the grant, we build them into the budget to make sure that they are here to continue to protect and service you. Also, we received what's called the uh, AFG grant, and that's a grant to purchase new fire equipment. That grant totaled about $450,000. So our, our firefighters and this administration has been working on this community's behalf, and we will continue to. That's over $1 million in grants since 2010 to help provide fire services and emergency management services to our community. Alrighty. Again, let me thank all of you for coming out and showing your support for our fire and emergency services department. We appreciate it. Thank you. And I think now we'll go with the free rise, don't we? <laughs> All righty. Thank each and every one of you. All right. At, at this time, that concludes the program part of the pro process, but now it's show and tell. You know, we're, we're going to open up the doors, let you look in the trucks, climb up in the trucks, and uh, we'll do that uh, first. And then as we thin out the uh, traffic here, We'll take a little ride around the complex here. Anybody wants to take a ride before we uh, conclude the total program? Oh, no. <laughs> we, we, we already have a request for driving, so I, I, I don't know. We, we'll have to check your certifications. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if you're trained up yet. But uh, right now, we're going to open the doors, have show and tell, and answer questions. Uh, and also, while you're here, you know, if you have questions about other issues from the fire department, feel free. We're here to serve you. Uh, if you need to uh, find out how you can get someone that needs that smoke alarm, we'll take your name and make contact with them. Uh, you might want to mention the three stations. Oh, okay, yes. All right. Real quickly, just so you'll know, uh, we spoke about having seven stations throughout the community. Uh, the three stations that will be getting these are numbered. All our stations are numbered. We're talking numbers, so forgive if I just say the numbers. But uh, one is station three, which is located at 30th and Ash. The other one is station four which is Commerce Road. I want to say it's 12, or so I just know the uh, numbers. But it's Station 4, Commerce Road. And number 7, which is Ridgeway, which is out Ridgeway. So those are the stations, 3, 4, and 7. And all the trucks have numbers on the front identifying which one goes to which station. So that's how we, that's how we talk in the fire service, by the numbers. 3, 4, and 7 are the stations they'll be located at. And uh, that truck will be, it's 3, it's going to 30 Nash, but it will be going to the new station as well once it's completed, once it's completed. So they'll have, 3 will have a new truck and a new fire station here very soon. So that's where they're going. And uh, Station 4 serves the Broadmoor community. Station 7 serves Ridgeway, Hazel area out that way. So that, that just kind of gives you some bearing where those stations are actually located. But uh, like I said, we got show and tell. We have some of the early drawings on display when we were going through the design stage. Uh, those are the drawings of the actual truck. You have dimensions. You can ask questions about that. So it's open house, if you will, for those that are here. If you got questions about other issues, like I say, we're here to serve you and we're, we're in no hurry. So uh, we will be doing a little take around the uh, complex. Someone wants to take a ride. But right now it's show and tell. And anybody got a quick question before we go to that point? Or?
Approximately four hundred thousand dollars. No other questions. Well, thank you again for coming out, and hope you enjoy. And let's take a look at these fire trucks. Right. <laughs>